Hello everyone, happy Wednesday to you. This is Dr. Barry with Adult and Pediatric ENT again. Kind of crazy to believe it's already Wednesday. The week is going by fast here in the office. Uh, our telemedicine visit's still going well, uh, but today I'm coming to Facebook here to talk to you guys about something that, at least here in Michigan, is in full swing, and that is uh, the start of our allergy season. So I'm uh, going to talk to you today about some of the, the common things we see allergy-wise as ear, nose, and throat doctors. Uh, in terms of seasonal allergies, which are kind of the allergies everyone tends to think about, but truthfully, uh, there are seasonal and, sadly, year-round allergies. Uh, seasonal allergies are the ones that usually get patients in the door to us, though. So that's where patients start no noticing itchy, watery eyes, sneezing, some nasal congestion, maybe a runny nose, um, or just stuffy nose. Uh, Post-nasal drainage is a big one that patients start to notice, and there may be some times of the year that seem to be worse than others. Uh, there are also year-round allergens. Uh, sometimes people can figure out what that is causing that, and, and other times uh, they don't know. They just know they can't breathe out of their nose, and they, they, they come to us. So um, in terms of seasonal allergies, there are some different things that can trigger those that we do pay attention to. Uh, in terms of the springtime allergens, those are going to be our trees. So uh, the ones we test for here in the office, big in the, the Midwest, or it's called the Region 7 panel if we test for it in, in blood. But uh, in terms of the types of allergens we check for tree-wise, things like cottonwood, box, box elder, Alm, oak tree, um, birch trees, walnut trees, all these trees can kind of get us in the springtime in terms of pollen. Summertime allergens are going to be our grasses, and falltime allergens are going to be our weeds. So a lot of people know hay fever, and that is usually a, uh, especially in the ragweed season, everybody knows, oh, that's my hay fever season, and that uh, commonly that's a ragweed allergy, but can be a seasonal allergy just in general. Uh, in terms of the the other things that we do check for that are also year-round uh, allergens, unfortunately, are a bunch of different types of molds. So molds can be something that can get us uh, indoors. It can also be something that get us outdoors. Um, and it's sometimes that we don't even really know that that's something that's growing in a kind of a damp environment, you know, even outside in the woods and other things, that's where the, the, those those molds can get us here as well. In terms of some of the other year-round allergens that we check for that are pretty common, uh, dust mite is a big one, uh, feather, uh, cockroach. Uh, everyone kind of thinks that's funny that we check for that, uh, but cockroach does kind of tell us if you're going to have some sensitivities to processed foods because sometimes those things, unfortunately, can make it through a certain level of processing, but that does tell us a, a sensitivity there. And other things that we check for um, in terms of some year-round allergens are our pet danders, so cat and dogs. Don't worry, if you come to see us for allergies, we're not gonna tell you to, to take away your fur babies. We know <laughs> they're part of the family too, uh, but we certainly can help you with allergies that you might have with that and certainly help you um, to, to treat your allergy symptoms despite having a, a pet at home. Uh, allergy treatment these days, it, it has an additional format for how that might look. And so one of the one things that I wanna introduce to the Facebook world and our patients and uh, in, in the ENT community already knows it, but something that we see now uh, that's a nice option is sublingual drops. And I'm, I'm holding a vial up here. This is kind of a starter vial, and we'll talk about what that means. Um, but allergy uh, treatment is as easy as, as picking up one of those vials and taking a couple drops uh, under the tongue at home. So uh, sublingual therapy is something that we see um, being a, a big su success in our patients. We have several patients now on it. And from a convenience factor, it's just really nice. Uh, you come into the office, you come see us, we, we assess you allergy-wise. We, we are able to do allergy testing in the form of a couple things. Depending on um, your your insurance or other limitations, we either would do a skin test here in the office, uh, and, and that is done by two of our wonderful allergy technicians. We actually have a several others that help in that process and do an awesome job. And from your allergy testing, we also then uh, can um, then kind of determine what's the best treatment therapy for you. And we may recommend sublingual drops. Uh, one of the other forms of testing that we do is sometimes send what's called an immunocaps testing, which can test for allergens in your blood. Uh, and that is another way that we might screen you for allergies. But going back to the sublingual drops, that has become something that's nice from a convenience standpoint because you come, you see us. 
Um, after we tell you what kind of allergens you are, we prepare a mixture for allergy treatment that is just for you, you, you specifically. And you then kind of work your way up in allergy drops. So you come see us for that first test. We make sure you tolerate everything okay. We kind of go over with you how to take things. And then at home every day, you're taking some drops under your tongue. At the beginning, you kind of ramp up in the process and we, we give you all these instructions, but we code those by color. So you might hear us say blue label or orange label, and that has to do with how the vials are actually um, color coded for us here to help you get to where you need to be allergy wise. The other convenient factors about the allergy drops over the traditional shots, though we certainly offer the traditional shots and are happy to do that here in our office, uh, is that once you come in from the vial and you're doing everything at home, you only come to see us then when you need your next vial. So for some patients, that's really easy. Then they don't have to worry about scheduling an appointment here in the office and then coming in with injections. We are um, injecting you and then we do want to monitor the site when we inject you. So you hang out with us here in the office. I still have to say, if you do choose to do the injection route, we have a pretty cool team. I think you'll like them. Uh, it's not too bad to hang out with us here for, for a 15 to 20 minute period. And our allergy tech team and technicians are, are wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, one of the other questions that we often get uh, beyond sublingual therapy and uh, some subcutaneous injection therapy are, what are some of the things I can do at home? I already know that I um, can do some things that, to help me. So if you are someone that you think you have a mold allergy, wearing a mask when you're outside or when you're uh, doing something in kind of a dank or dark uh, musky basement, it might not be a bad idea to wear a mask. Uh, same thing if you're outside, you mow the grass and you think grass is going to get you uh, either wearing a mask or coming in and doing a sinus rinse, uh, which is the new and improved neti pot we really like to, uh, patients to use for allergies, uh, can help with that too. Uh, in terms of dust mites, there are some specific things actually that you can do uh, to help really limit the, the exposure to that. One of the things is changing the bed linens frequently. My mother would be proud of that to say that you're changing, making your bed every day and, and changing those sheets. Uh, but making sure that you're also washing it in hot water. If you have any carpeted surfaces, the carpeted surfaces can hold in some dust mites. So making sure that you're vacuuming uh, regularly. Uh, you know, currently we say if you can, you know, vacuum at least weekly. Hot water does like to kill the, the dust mites. So even using washable blankets and washable breads, bed spreads that you can throw right in the laundry there is a good thing. Changing allergy filters is a great thing um, in terms of the home. Everybody nowadays is really pretty smart on that. A lot of them are allergy graded and you can kind of check on how well they're going to filter out some of these things that we don't want circulating around in your home. So I usually encourage patients to change them out even a little more frequently than the filter might say on the label. And that's just to kind of keep everything circulating in your, your air a lot better. Um, in, in, in terms of allergies, the, the process is actually really simple where we try and make it really easy to get you assessed for them. Certainly, if you think you have some springtime allergens as the season is starting here, we're certainly happy to see you for that and get you set up with some allergy testing here in our office. And then you may be a candidate for some of these therapies we just talked about. If you have any questions about allergies, what you can be allergic to, what the testing involves, um, you know, how long a visit takes or anything like that, please don't hesitate to give us a phone call. I'd be happy to have a conversation with you about it. You can send us a message here on Facebook. Um, An allergy season is in full swing, so we're certainly happy to see you for that. So hope you all are doing well out there. We miss seeing you in person, um, but I'm here this week in the office. If there's anything we can help with, I'm here for you. Send us a message or, or tag us here and leave us a comment. All right. Have a great Wednesday, everyone. Be safe and healthy.